I think our robots have had enough at this point of being shrinking violets. I mean, we, we've tried our hardest to preserve life and save everybody, which of course we're still going to do. But to be nuked into orbit, very literally, to then build a moon base only to be assaulted by mechanoids that we can't do anything about because we've only got non-lethal weapons, just isn't cutting it anymore. Asimov's goal, Asimov's primary programming was always to save humanity. And how can we save humanity when we're ashes? We've got to change something here. So I think it's time for Operation Anti-Mech Force. We've got the start of a utopia. Let's defend the bloody thing. With everything we've got, with all of this wealth, with all of these buildings and these trains, we still can't stop a very simple, very small mechanoid cluster. This would kill us dead. This would be the end of the dream. I think we've got to accept that the, the dream to save humanity is only going to be achieved by actually gearing up somewhat. Now, I've, I can think of one really, really cool way to uh, make it work as a defensive procedure without risking it becoming a, a weapon that might be spread by humanity. What if we connect up a bunch of droids to a Glitternet on the moon exclusively with combat optimization stuff? The way this works is they connect up to a network, and if they're not connected to a network, all of their combat implants deactivate. Now, sure, these prosthetics will make them more effective in combat, but well, they're going to actually need weapons to use in combat. So we are probably going to want something. Now, there is in the Rimsonol security pack something called a wave emitter. And this, very literally on the workshop page, says it does not cause direct damage. Instead, it's designed as a way to take people out of combat. So this could not be any more perfect. But then finally, I was thinking our droids themselves, because the droids that we want to go in combat are the, are the drones, the tier one droids. We're going to need some way for them to not die instantly. So how about... <laughs> this is going to sound very bizarre. We have uh, a higher tier of taser beyond the non-lethal weaponry. Those are war casket tasers. And I think having a, a special squad of, say, three or four war casket droids would be really, really good. They can tank the damage. We equip them with non-lethal weapons, so they're not going to kill anything. And then in the event that we do have mechanoids or things that we have to respond to with destructive force to dismantle the mechanoids or repurpose the mechanoids, we can always just give them a war casket weapon. Those weapons can't be used by other people. So it wouldn't be a prison risk, and it sh uh, we, we wouldn't accidentally mix them up or anything like that. This is absolutely big brain time. And uh, kind of uh, literally there too, because that's going to be thousands and thousands of points of research. Maybe we should do the war casket thing first. Oh my god, a slave ship. Well, we, well, we made the pact. We made the pact that if there was ever a slave ship, we were going to buy the slaves, free them. So let's call up, uh, here we are, owner collection. It's very on the nose. <laughs> no. They've got another one. Queen Joris the Second. God, okay. Harriet, Larry, Tasty, join me. Um, I'm not selling anti-grain technology. I, I think we can either put it in a vault where nobody can get to it, or maybe, even more sensibly, we should destroy it so that that can't fall into the wrong hands. We've got alternate ways to make Glitter World medicine. And we've already got one tech print applied, so we can sell you that too. That seems like a nice thing to be selling traders. You know, the, the implication is there. And we'll sell a little Neutramine too. What are they going to do? Make medicine out of it? That seems fine. Boom. Join me. Where are you dropping them? Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a problem. That's a, that's a real problem. Uh, Asimov, get over here. Uh, okay. Staddle. Brother! Luckily, they're very sensible. Tasty, you're not. Larry, get in there. Harriet should be safe. Oh, a few seconds of being on the moon's surface. Probably disorientating, but they didn't immediately die. Okay, um, we're probably gonna have to train you over. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't think my heart can handle this. We could, we could carry them. Yeah, you know what? Let's just get the robots to carry them. They can hook them up to the spacesuits temporarily and bring them over here. Harriet joined as a colonist. She's a child, so she needs educating. There you go. You're going to carry her over. She's not going to take damage. She's fine. Okay, I just thought I'd better double check. Uh, you two count as slaves still, so we've got to emancipate you immediately. Um, what I'll have to do then, this is a, a temporary thing. This is, this is a, a purely just a mechanic to get them over there so that we can flip them over. We are going to have to throw down a couple of slave beds. Break Asimov's poor heart. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and begin the slave emancipation. Here's a problem. What if... Oh, they're part of the Junker faction. What if they leave? What if they decide to leave? We're going to have to imprison them and, and take them to the planet and then release them from there, aren't we? Maybe convert them as well? Oh, piss. 
Well, look, we can't have slaves in the colony either way, so let's do it. Let's begin the emancipation. <laughs> what a bizarre day for these people. They get told by the, the cruel bastards who sell them that they finally got new owners. They land. It's a happy, friendly robot with an enormous eyeball saying that they're free now. Very, very strange. On a weird moon base. What a time. And we're good. Tasty stayed. But uh, Larry is leaving. Larry, I can't let you leave. Larry the emu. No, no, no. Larry, you can't leave. Um, Here, we'll, we'll turn one of these rooms into... La Larry wants to go. That's Larry's prerogative. La Larry, if you want to leave, we'll let you. But you're going to have to wait for the next ship departure. Because Larry still counts as a... Uh, try to arrest Larry. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, good shit. There we go. Managed to redeem it. Let's put you in here. We'll get you converted over. Then we're happy to release you to the planet. You, as long as you reject violence, I'm happy to let you go back to your people. You, I'll take you to the planet myself. We're going to need a school, which I didn't really think about. Um, I guess we'll spin it off of here like that. That's okay. That could work. Larry, Larry, Larry. You're no! Carver, put Larry down. Bring Larry back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe convert then release was the wrong the wrong option to choose uh, when we're on the moon. Put, like, put Larry down. Put Larry down. Larry's had enough. Uh, we'll say no interaction. Uh, to be fair, I could only convert then release. And we will send Larry d through the ship. Now, Larry, if you remember, was, on the, was, was from the Junkers faction. We've definitely converted over some of their people before. So this will tell us for definite whether or not that has reset when our base was... Um, Reset. <laughs> Violently. Release Larry the Emu. Go, Carver. Get her out of here. Thank you, Larry. Please enjoy your freedom. Tell them that we bought you. Oh, no. One out of 25. Oh, God. I mean, this is fine, though, because we could always do. Not raiding. We're going to go to their settlements and ask them politely to stop being violent. And if they refuse, we'll uh, take some of them to the moon to show them that there can be a better life. Oh, my God. We haven't got any food. Carver, get back in the ship. You know what? We're going to have to send loads of people over there to try and find something. The strawberries are all, almost, almost grown, but we're going to have to turn the initial crop into just more seeds. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to grow any more. I might regret this, especially if we get a raid turning up. Cicero, Descartes, play so uh, Carver. Okay, I think the quickest way to do this is say harvest all. And if you see any more fiber corn down here, because that would be amazing. Um, bloody loads of it. Let's go chop all of it. Let's just chop it all down. That's just gonna have to do, otherwise they're gonna starve to death. Let's get back as fast as possible and feed them copious amounts of raspberries. Um, you know what? Land it, land it there. That's fine. Firstly, okay, mechanoids is a problem. Totally agree. What the hell is going on with the mountains? Have they always looked like that? <laughs> Am I going insane? What's going on with that? Okay, so frustratingly, you might have noticed that Harriet and Tasty have also both taken damage. The problem with Rimworld is areas are a very flexible thing. Uh, and in this case, oh, careful there. This this wasn't the problem. Uh, when I landed the ship, they were both so hungry, they dashed to the ship immediately. And uh, you can see where they immediately start to decompress. I guess I've got to lock this door. What I can do, though, uh, we do have a mod that lets us build people movers. You know, like you see it in an airport. It's the, it's the floor that accelerates you fast. I could put those under the rail tracks. And then just have the people go between it manually. I mean, that works fine. It's not that expensive to expand out all the buildings like that. And I think it would look kind of cool as well. I've also decided to take away all of the Glitternet stuff temporarily. We need some sort of lethal weapon research. It goes against our modus operandi to use it on, on, on humans, but against hostile mechanoids designed to kill humans, this seems only reasonable. Oh! What do you mean mechanoids have woken up? Melee attacking rails. Oh, shit. Time is up. We've got three weak, sure. But, but still lethal mechanoids hanging around the base. And I don't think we've got any weapons to defend ourselves, nor can we build more because Asimov is broken down. Well, this is the wake-up call I think we needed. Oh, shit. And the constructor bots are going in there to try and repair the rails that the mechanoids are smashing. I think that four droids punching a mechanoid could probably beat it. Let's give it a go. Oh, Plato kept his club. Amazing. And then you've got flashbangs. And then the three of them just, the other three just descend in, in melee mode. That could work well. Okay, you stand there. Cicero, come over here. Mechanoids. <laughs> oh. Well, that could have ended a lot worse. Good God. 
Uh, mechanoids? Hello. Don't you do that. You leave my guy alone. Step back. Stun. Stun. Oh, it's slightly too far over. Shit. Hold, 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 your, hold your ground. Stand your ground. Go. Come on, Cicero. Come on. There we go. A bit, be careful about puncturing their spacesuits. Nice. Get in there. Beat it to death. We didn't need to do that. That's a militer. They could have just gone in and flicked it over, I think. Oh, you fool. Cicero. What happened to the tactics? Amazing. <laughs> well, there's one down. The one I'm really concerned about is the, uh, the Tesseron. That thing seems like it's going to have a lot more... Oh, God. They're fighting the anesthetic turrets. Wait, but they're distracted. Go in. Go, go, go. It's not going to do any damage to the anesthetic turrets at all. I mean, it is, but it's slow. We can sweep from behind and kick them while they're distracted. Go, Carver. Ah! Carver, you legend. Carver, you are a legend amongst droids. Cicero's in there. No, Mechanoids, your time is done. Descartes, go and help the turrets. I think they've pretty much got this one covered. Nice. One down. And then, ooh. Doing a bit of hefty damage to Descartes. We're good. We're safe. Well, we're not safe because we know that turret has a pretty unfortunate range to it. I'm happy with that. That could have gone a lot, lot worse. We're going to have to make a forbidden zone. Uh, let's go ahead and invert that and then restrict everybody. Greenhouse trader. My God, we can get some more seeds. Uh, not that we've got much to trade right now. Ah! Uh, not that we've got much to trade right now. <laughs> Every time. I got like 4,000 hours of muscle memory of clicking the top one for the trader. And then d d biotech comes out and ruins it all. Right. Let's have a look. I love the fact that Comrade Lee Poor Poor Agritecture, the greenhouse trader, sells pickle joris. That's very appropriate. Um, potatoes probably couldn't hurt. Oh, we've got 50. We've got... How did you make that? Oh, we didn't make that because if Asimov made it, it would have been an uh, excellent quality or a masterwork quality. I'll give Asimov more credit. Ah, delicious, tasty potatoes. And the best part is we don't even have to process that into seeds, I presume. Oh, maybe you do have to process them into seeds. Never mind. I take back everything I've said. Uh, po... Ah, for balance reasons. Uh, it makes a lot more sense. Multi-barrel weapons. You've done it, Asimov. A final breakthrough. Then we, go, then we get war caskets. Then we'll have to make a droid to put in a war casket to hopefully take out these mech clusters. It feels like, uh, it feels like the beginning of a strange era that we're going to have to be very careful in. Because multi-barrel weapons for the androids are just a tool to deal with humanity's enemies. To take out the mechanoids in the most effective way possible. What do you mean, Clean Sweeper 1 has been relieved of life? Oh, shit. Wait, what happened to my forbidden area? Hey, 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 hey. Because they're going... Well, that doesn't look very... <laughs> that doesn't look very forbidden at all. I'm fucking remod and it's janky zones. Okay, uh, look, let's just say... Get rid of all of that, then. There you go. Just don't, don't path over to anywhere dangerous, okay? I don't care what bloody shortcuts you take. Just don't go near it. It was a clean sweeper over there anyway. What were you going to clean sweep? What, like this blood? Well, on the subject of things that we plan on clean sweeping, let's throw down that war casket foundry. Then we'll throw together a little tier one droid. You work on that one. Let's get uh, anybody else working on the casket foundry. Did we already have a Hannibal? I think I did name one Hannibal, and then I think they got horribly murdered, right? We need we need a, we need a robot expert at war. Uh, I'm going to name you... I'm going to name you uh, Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu 297. Do we want to wait for a... Oh, no, we can't really wait for anything if we've got two mech clusters already hanging around. This is going to be the smallest, most adorable war casket. Well, I mean, compared to last series, maybe not. Do we not have Crafty the Tiny Dwarf? <laughs> brother. Brother, help me. No. Shit, we're out of uranium. No, we're not. What the hell are we lacking? Components? As a mov. Lazy, get to work. Oh, I was going to say I'll make it so fabrication is higher priority for him than researching, but he's just been... He's just been a lazy, lazy boy. Ah, there we go. God, he's so patient. I hope you can recharge in the war casket. Otherwise, that would be a problem, wouldn't it? Boom. <laughs> wow, I love the clashing color scheme. That really... You are tiny. Oh. Oh, that's really nice. I like that. That's that's kind of nice, though, because it's also disarming. Not, not not literally. I mean, like, metaphorically disarming in that when people see that, they're not seeing an enormous weapon of war. They're just seeing a small little armored robot. Your vacuum cleaner covered in copious amounts of military-grade weaponry. Then in 58 more research, so about now. Excellent. We can throw down some... Uh, you have to build it manually, right? Yeah, there we go. Um, oh, look, there's war casket tear grenade launchers. Ooh, okay. Um, oh, sorry, tear gas grenade launchers. All grenade launchers are probably tear grenade. Uh, war casket auto rifle, slug rifle might be good. Slug thrower, basically anything that's going to get through that mechanoid armor. 
Um, I guess we'll throw down the slug rifle. Now, the problem with trying to encase the entire railway line in glass and building all the buildings out of glass is we need a lot of bloody glass. I think I'm going to make another tier one droid. Right? Because what, what are you doing right now? You're extracting seeds. You're cooking meals. You're currently recharging. You're digging at slate, but almost done. Nazimov is researching. I think we need more hands on deck. I'm not going to build like a tier two or tier three droid, so they're just going to be for smelting. I do want to build a dedicated droid for crafting, though. And that's where these databases will come in super, super handy again. Smelt bots. Hello. I don't want to let the AI down because, of course, the AI wanted me to name them after philosophers, scientists, etc., etc. Something relevant to their line of work. I don't know if you need a degree in... Smelting sand. Glass, glass professor. Who said that Rimwald also couldn't be educating? We're going to go for Agricola, uh, who is apparently a German scholar, mineralogist, and metallurgist. I couldn't think of a more perfect name for my friendly robot. <laughs> and your job, uh, despite all that, is to stand in front of a smelter all day making glass. Enjoy your life. Oh, spacesuits. Oh, wait, but war caskets are sealed. Oh, well, that's good to know. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm completely ignorant. I was just so used to our utopic moon life that I completely forgot that you're going to blow up if you go outside. My bad. I'm also not sure why, but the soil keeps disappearing. Maybe we are just using it too much. Maybe it's to do with the tilling. That's very strange. We're going to have to make frequent trips to the planet then to be able to replace the soil that effectively we're using up. Any more excuses to go out there into the world and not just sit in our lovely moon utopia anyway. How long does it take to build a gun? I've been waiting for this for ages now. Good God. Yes. Oh, my God. That's very silly. <laughs> okay. Um, what is recoil anyway? I mean, it's not like we're on the moon, and that might be relevant. In you go, then. This is as good as it's going to get. I think you'll be fine. War casket armor. I know a war casket isn't massively defensive. You'll be okay. Yep. I think you'll be, I think you'll be fine. One cluster down. Ooh. Vanimetric cells. Amazing. Actually amazing. Now, this other cluster is going to be a uh, big baby time. Absolutely big baby time. If we just shoot up through there, and then we hit that, and that will set off a chain reaction. What does that do, though? Proximity activator. Okay, oh, no, nothing. Nothing. We're fine. We could just we could just go here and set it all off from this distance. I was a little bit concerned it might blow up and take Sun Tzu with it, but I think you'll be fine. Um, shoot, shoot that. Oh, well, isn't that some bullshit? Oh, God. Careful. Hey, great work. And then finally. Nice. Amazing. I feel so much safer already. Now, if we can make like, I don't know, a dozen of uh, the, the Sun Tzu version robots, keep them all in storage somewhere and then just pull them out when we need them for combat, that would be great. And it would save on lots of lag. What are you doing to me? Another mech cluster. Oh, yikes. Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay, they seem to have upped the ante a little bit on that one. Not just a case of dropping them with Sun Tzu and taking them all out. We might have to build another combat bot. I guess I guess I'll I guess we have to. <laughs> Buy another, maybe like another I don't know, like another four might not hurt. Ooh, hello. Wow. Why were all the others like just generic Android colors? And then these ones have all cool colors going on. Uh I'm gonna call you. Did we have a Hannibal? I feel like we already had a Hannibal, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have another Hannibal. There we go. <laughs> I love the fact they're bright blue as well. I think that really does add to it a little bit. Then we'll throw down another slug rifle. I've just got to be so, so careful. It's another reason why I want storage for them, so that in case enemies drop down and they're already in line of sight for these two, I don't want them immediately opening fire. I guess to that effect, then what we should really do is limit them and say no. Um, let's go ignore. Unless you're told to attack. I think two little droids with slug rifles enough to take this out. I mean, the pipement's not a problem. The military's not a problem. Auto, oh, auto mortars. When every building is built of glass, that strikes me as a slight problem. Let's, uh, let, let's say turn off fire at will, temporarily. Let's move you to, like, here. No, let's, let's put you, like, there so those turrets can't immediately get the drop on us. I want to see if we can knock that thing out. Oh! Damn it. Okay, well, the shot was swallowed up. That's fine. That's okay. Uh, we could retreat to the Citadel, which in hindsight might be a good idea. Run and gun, boys. Oh, you know what? No, stand your ground. Blow that up. Blow that up. Take your shots. Oh, come on. Come on. Uh, you know what? You shoot that one. This is horrible. Oh, the gamble. They're so inaccurate. Holy shit. I mean, they're, they're slug launcher. You kind of 
Oh, Jesus, you kind of expect it. Okay, this is the last, this is the last I'm gonna gamble. Okay, uh, let's just move back now. Let's, let's, let's be sensible about this. Stop taking unnecessary risks. Yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go. Come and fight them on our territory. We're fighting one another. Oh, I forgot those go berserk, don't they, when you do damage to them? That's right. Okay, well, let's start doing some damage elsewhere. Hannibal, get into cover. For God's sake. Good shit. Good shit. And then we just sit here and we take them out from range. Nice. Get out of here. You're ruining my moon, Utopia. Oh, we can't see the other one. Shit. Um, I mean, come forward. It's a pikeman. It's a pikeman. They're going to see us regardless. I don't think those... Careful. I don't think the shots from the pikeman are going to be that threatening. Nice. There we go. There we go. There we go. And then just the turret. Ooh, careful. Let's get one of you behind cover, I suppose. You go there. And then you go to there. And then everybody is fine. Easiest raid of my entire life. Amazing. Not bad. Why do we need that robotic sensor so that we can get Android maintenance beds so they're not just taking up regular hospital beds? Because that really doesn't work for them. But at this point, we've pretty much finished all the structures. <laughs> the ridiculous, unnecessary, over-the-top structures. So this area is going to be for, uh, what did I say? Like, manufacturing robotics. And then this area will be the, will be the factory. And then maybe we'll have a sub-rail or something dug through the mountain there connecting those two up as the, kind of the only area we'll do that for. So let's set up a stockpile. Let's just say, let's just dump everything in here. Stop, 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 stop. Several large meteorites have struck the ground. Oh, I get the feeling they may have struck more than just the ground. Oh, shit. Tasty. Tasty, my man. Struck by a meteor. <laughs> oh, shit. So much for my utopia. I mean, it is literally raining resources that I certainly won't complain about. Just as we'd almost finished making some good progress with the buildings today, you go do something like that. <laughs> now I have to rebuild. No, I didn't want to mine everything. Just the meteors. This is going to be easily the most organized stockpile I've ever had. This is going to make this series the utopia. Organized individual distinct piles of resources not just chucking everything on the same shelf and hoping for the best the only regret is not building this building before anything else because um you know being able to cut stone blocks is actually quite useful when you're trying to build buildings oh come on it's almost done it's almost done and luxurious i mean this is too far for the fabric I i'll admit for uh, what is going to be effectively somewhere where we stone cut this is a little extra but it's called Android Utopia, not Android generic room or base with three square buildings all crammed together. This is a problem. Uh, so, luckily they're trapped on the outside. Actually, this is unintentionally. Oh, <gasps> it can't fire the thumb cannon because their area of effect and it will damage itself. Wow. What's it like being that smart? Now we can play Whack-A-Mole. Except we're the mole, and the mole wax, and it has a gun, and it's in a war casket. This metaphor's falling apart. Yes. Yeah, just like that, just like that. There we go, here we go, here we go. Hello there. Die. Ugh. These aren't very accurate, I will admit. Ooh, okay. Well, that's that bit dealt with. We could just lock the doors and leave them there forever, because they won't dig through the wall. <laughs> you never get through this door. And things like five whole centimeters of steel. No, don't get into melee, don't get into melee. Go, 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 go. That was close. That was close. I almost ruined everything. I'll admit. Yes. Yes. Die. Die. Oh! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> go. 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 Kill it. Sun Tzu. Not like this. Hannibal, come down. Shit. Come on. Wow, that was that was terrible. That was the worst combat I've ever seen. Ooh, we have enough points in the skills workshop to give a passion to Carver for construction. And given the amount of construction we're doing, I'm completely fine with that. They, these keep filling up. It, it's rare, to be honest, they don't disappear from uh, losing power. Good enough, I think, to start setting things up. Now, while I've been doing this, I have been thinking that we might need to move around... Some of the stuff that I've already built, which is very frustrating because that takes the longest. You know, take it all apart, you'll plan it out, move the rail, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's going to be pretty necessary for defense. I think I'm probably going to move the Citadel building. Got a lot of the furniture being reinstalled over then. So we've got a kind of generic crafting room, unskilled labor in that one. Then we've got uh, more kind of apparel and weapon crafting. This one we've got fabrication and the smithy. And then down here, we've just got the war casket. Thought having that in a whole room by itself was kind of fun. Then, of course, the stockpile itself. Have I missed some stuff? Steel art bench? Uh, sure. <laughs> Where the hell am I going to put that? 
Uh, there you go. You can sit right there. Perfect. So to go over a little bit more about what I want to move, I want to shift this because it feels weird having like a station there and there. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put that where the server room is. Then we're going to have people come into a room here. This one will be the prison. Then we've got the hospital. We'll have a drugs lab. And, and this room will turn into just a generic research lab because we don't have that much gear for it, right? We are going to have to move the citadel because this doesn't uh, work defensively anymore because we've covered it in... Or we've surrounded it by effectively a layer of glass. So what I'm thinking is we'll shift all this to uh, kind of this corner. And then this can be kind of a quote-unquote base entrance. We won't build anything else out here. You know what room needs a base builder difficulty? That would be good, wouldn't it? Just so you can sit there and not have to worry about raids and just build your ridiculous moon base non-stop. Please don't tell me I built those out of steel tiles. No, but it's paved. Oh, thank God. I just blueprint the whole thing and <laughs> like transplant it over. I don't know if this will work, but we'll give it a go. Uh, let's just take that. And then I think we stick it like... Hmm. Move the railway around it a little bit. I kind of like it slotting into the railway, but obviously that's not massively... Have the train run through the middle. Ooh, that's a fun plan. I'd have to redo the whole thing. I'd have to redo the whole thing, but look at how well it fits into where the rail line is and then also falling between those two mountains as well. So let's shift the server room out as well. That can go into... That, that can go into the robotics facility wherever we decide to build that. Oh, I've got so much more to build. Why did I promise so much stuff? Azamov, what are you doing in the new, larger, finer, nicer citadel? What a fool. Um, let's also door you out of there. So I, I've decided to leave the rail line because I actually kind of like it going into the city. Though, given that this was also kind of the emergency exit too. So what we would probably want is our people to be able to get on the rocket ship as fast as possible if there was a problem. Now they can just run down. And bear in mind, like I said, I'm going to replace the floors on this with automatic moving conveyor belts. So in theory, if we do have to abandon, let's say, for example, the Empire turn up with a bunch of nukes, we can get here as fast as possible no matter where we are in the base. No more. No more. We're done here. Get out. Good riddance, tasty Rutherford. I'm so sick of you and your hypoxia fetish. Look away for 30 seconds and the guy's jumped out of the airlock. Decided in my infinite base building wisdom to not have the power grid outside the base. That's not, that's not a great idea. Oh, those are generating enough power to keep the lights on even without any batteries. We've got some set up here, which only give us 2,400 watts. Holy crap. Okay. So between those and the, these solar panels, as long as it's daytime, I've even got all these too. As long as it's daytime, we haven't got to worry about it. I might go as far then to take all of these apart and we'll just build the better solar generators going forward. So this room here is going to be... Oh, let's get rid of that. This room here is going to be specifically just for the batteries. Oh, I also added the mod that makes it so war caskets can haul because I think it's a bit weird that they can't haul. I mean, I get that they can't do fine motor control. They can't, like, craft because they're in a massive suit of armor, but they can... I think carrying things is sort of what war caskets are designed for, right? Just big, enormous guns. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you so much. I hate humans. I hate children. Why are we doing this, Asimov? Why rescue her? And this building is going to be a... Uh, I'm not going to use the term prison. I was going to say we'll use the term re-education camp, but in hindsight, that's far worse. <laughs> It's a, it's a room that we keep people in who have ideologies that don't align with ours and then we don't let them leave until they change that. It's fine. <laughs> it makes it sound like a lot worse than it actually is. Remember, net gain for humanity. You've got to bear that in mind. We have a person. A pit brawler named Hale. Someone grabbed him. Plato's grabbed him. Now you're probably thinking, is that prison ready to go? Of course it's not, you fool. I'm spending far too long building cosmetic railways. It does look better. I think the base has a much better balance to it now that this has been moved around a little bit. Because it felt a bit silly having that many. But but this seems it seems good. Like they, 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 the, the rail stations are almost subconsciously equidistant now. And they're still equally as useless and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm basically just rebuilding uh, exactly the layout we had before for the uh, for the gas vents, the anesthetic, whatever. Um, we, we could throw down a whole other ring here. That's the best part. We could hold this mount out. We could throw down a second layer, a third layer. So the newly redone quote-unquote life support area is, is, is going okay. It still needs a lot of work. We've got the lab reinstalled. We've got a, a pseudo drugs lab, as in a single workbench. We've got the hospital still set up and then the hydroponics, which I've swapped back to because I was sick of the soil disappearing and I'm not making any more trips to the planet. So we've kind of come full circle with that now. And over here, we'll throw down a, a luxury prison. We're going to give them all the amenities they want. We're not just going to cram them in like sardines like I tend to do with prisons. We're not going to lock them in a tiny little cupboard. We're going to make sure that they are living their best lives. So let's do that. That should cover all of them. How many wardrobes do you think the prisoners will need? 
That's that should be enough for them, right? We've got to make sure they get uh, recreation because I generally play with a mod that allows them to get rec or, or gives them a recreation need. And here is where I would put my billiards table if I had any cloth whatsoever to speak of. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow, I love masterworks. I told you this would be a luxury prison. Look at this place. Let's go ahead and stick all these lights on, and then we'll build recreation as soon as we can, which is going to be a while, unfortunately. And then we'll say four prisoners. There we go. Very nice. Oh, I'm glad. This looks so much better. I'm glad I took the time to redo a lot of this today. I know it was a lot of rebuilding shit that I've already done before. So what are we waiting on now? Just uh, a boatload of glass, which they should be working on. Why are you not working on? Oh, because you're actually just building the glass. Fair enough. I was about to say, I think before... Did I even mention this? Am I losing my mind? I was going to say I need to build one of these in each of the buildings, an Android charging station. We haven't been able to because I forgot to set back up the comms console. So let's mine up the silver ore. Now, ideally, a comms console in every unit would make a lot of sense. So let's throw one down uh, somewhere around here. Uh, you know what? I guess in the greenhouse makes a bit of sense. There we go. Um, then in this area, we'll pop it there. So that's all that connected up. In here, wherever it makes sense. Yeah, that'll do. Solar flares are driving me actually insane. I don't think we've had one successful crop ever. It is life. In this luxury moon base, so difficult. I genuinely uh, don't think we have ever grown canola. I, I sincerely think it has all died before, <laughs> before I've been able to do anything with it. For God's sake. Well, on the plus side, one day we might also get some wood. Look at this. Look at this. I, I've not had any wood since we friggin' started. I've got leaves that have been waiting to be built forever. You would break my heart like this. You would kill a man. This, uh, the base is like done. Like we're, we're laying cables for the final thing and then work on that people mover kind of incidentally as and when I can be bothered because that's going to be a lot of resources. You would, you would break me like this. Where are they landing? Where are they landing? <gasps> oh my God, are we safe? It might, oh no, we are not safe. Well, here comes the chaos. Somebody has landed in the building. Holy shit. Uh, it's it's leaking. I don't know whether leaking will immediately give them hypoxia. I think it absolutely will, though. Okay. Uh, everybody just, just on standby. Let's just get everybody down here waiting to rescue people uh, uh, as much as possible. Who's close? Carver. Carver? You and that train. No wonder this base is taking hours to build when you're always fanning around over there. And this is going to devastate Asimov because if we can't save everybody, every single person we don't save will repeatedly upset him. Is he already upset about you? Pomugob? Uh, needs. Pomugob. No, he's actually fine. Okay, purple, purple, purple. Uh, you know what? Let's let's keep our people... Let's, let's put three in the rail station, and then we'll keep uh, Cicero, Sun Tzu, and Hannibal out here. Wait, who rescued the other person? That's right, it was Carver. It's all coming back to me now, because I shouted at him about the train. Get out there. Go, go, go rescue purple. Now, I have strategically, very cleverly, placed glass auto doors all the way around here, so we can still... Nice. We can still maneuver around the map pretty easily. And I've put them in, like, fairly generously around, too. So it should be kind of easy to get about the place. Ah, uh, Barton. Uh, maybe we should stand out here instead. Because they are just landing more over in this direction than anywhere else. Right, Plato, go. Go, 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 go. You won't die. This is great. This is great. Keep going. Madeline. Uh, yes, Cicero, you're on it. Oh my god, we are the saviors, the moon saviors of all the moons for your ships to get shot down over. You have picked the best one. Because all the droids are pretty alright attending as well. I'm just going to leave them over there because they'll just keep doctoring in the... Uh... Yeah, look, they're, they're all just going to doctor, so nobody is going to die here. It just depends if I've got enough people to save... Oh! Uh, to save everyone. Larry. Oh, Larry, you have landed quite far away. Larry Lopez, get him. Save that man. Nice work. Okay, let's move uh, Hannibal around to here as well, just preemptively. I think this may be the first time ever I've actively tried to save everybody from a space battle. Madeline's joined us. Hello. Welcome. What are you? Oh, you're a dirt mole. Uh, sure. Welcome. Yes, fine. I might send you down to the planet, though, because clearly the moon is a dangerous place. Between the decompression and the hypoxia and the f uh, just general hypothermia, space battles, mechanoids, it's not a nice place to live. I mean, it's a utopia. But it's a dangerous utopia. Rubber. Oh my god, I didn't even realize there was someone over there. Uh, Sun Tzu. Go rescue. <laughs> Fucking droid. <laughs> not gonna save you, but I will mop your blood up. Okay, this is what I was concerned about, because now we've got... Uh, okay, Asimov, come down here. 
Agricola's here. Hello. Good news. Space battle is ending. Rubber got brain damage. That's unfortunate. Sun Tzu, why are you not rescuing her? Oh, because the bloody hospital's full. Oh, shit. Oh, Rubber actually died. Damn. Okay, that's unfortunate. Uh, I was going to say we'll just keep her on like uh, on like an IV and, and vitals monitors until we can actually... Until we're ready to commit to that idea. Because obviously I can't build the, the med pod anyway. That's unfortunate. Are you, are you going to be sad about that, right? Because we failed. Yep. Rubber died. Apparently someone called Grey died. I didn't even see anyone called Grey. Uh, two observed corpses and then also death is troubling. It, it's, it swings and roundabouts, right? We saved a lot of people. We've got a lot of new people joining us. But we did lose a couple there in the process. We tried our hardest. Oh, God. About to say what happened to <laughs> what happened to our colonists? There we got everybody joining, and I think for today things are going to stay exactly right there. <laughs> I know I've been saying this with shocking frequency lately, but that was a lot of building today, and I know a lot of people don't uh, don't really like the building so much. Lots of people are like, yes, we're really into the building. A lot of other people, of course, more into the the action, the combat extended style, uh, whatever, the high octane rim rim action. But this is probably the end of the big building projects. You know, I, I do want to throw down a factory at some point, but we haven't really got a use for it. I'm not just going to build a factory so that we can make a load of resources or anything unnecessarily. We need something to be putting those resources to. And until I've come up with a good idea for how we're going to save humanity by building a factory, we're not going to build a factory, if that makes sense. I want to build a landing pad for the ship. I want to build that hospital expansion, like I said. We'll need um, the, uh, the robotics bay, definitely, for mechanator-related stuff. And then we need to find a way still to make soldiers and be able to keep them in storage until we need them. But I'm pretty happy with that. I think this is good. And another thing I feel like I'm saying with more and more frequency is, I don't know how the hell I'm going to edit this into an episode. Because this has been just like me passively building a base for five hours. So God knows what we'll do about that. Thank you all for joining me nonetheless. Thank you as always to the uh, executive producer patrons for making the series possible, for making the channel possible. Thank you to Could Be Sleep, Spin Techs. Yiji, Accidental King, Crow Skull, also, Ait, Genuine Guy, Hanky, Spanky, Azazol, Validus, Q, O Trash Panda, Cam Lion, Swallow My Mayo, Slayer, Nash EQ, Nidalan, Tanya Degura Chaff, The White Fox God, Minty Mushrooms, Simothy Jimothy, The Legend Boss, TMM Dominic, Code Kai, Archbishop, Heathen, Zonny the Beard, Vocarian, Baldor of the Hammer, Brittany Lee, Necro something, Orgthal, Igtenio, Misanthropic Humanist, and Izzy Claire for their support over, over, over there, over on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you for making the channel possible. Thank you for making it so I don't have to take sponsorships for internet VPNs, which all sell your data anyway. Thank you as well to Turkey, Singed, Dartneys, Kerjack, November, Tree, John the Rock Cena, Blood for the Blood God, Aramis, This Flex, Ken Buchanan, Ethan Wurtzman, Jeff's Revenge, Epilogue, Runner, Peter Elsom, Life Rage 2012, Ruvixia, Angry Ares, Edgemere, Cameron Smith, Rubber Robbie, Just Maths, Neko, Walter White, Max Lanto, Europala84, David Whitcomb, Wifty, Cryo Metals, Blaze, Cheshire the Cat, and Sam the Central Surface 2. Join me tomorrow for Rim Rim and Crusader Kings at 6 p.m. As always, I'm going to do some uh, second channel stuff soon. As soon as I get to build the mod pack for whatever game I'm going to be playing over there. Ooh, that's a secret. And then, of course, more Pokemon Infinite Fusion whenever I get a chance to not play so much Rimworld. <laughs>